So I know, Scott, you've been thinking a lot about young boys. No, <laughs> wait. That came out wrong. That came out wrong. About, <laughs> about the men in crisis problem, which yeah. uh, I, I was reading some amazing statistics, knowing this is a, a pet uh, subject of yours. And uh, I feel like sometimes people in this country get caught in a paradigm that's just not happening anymore. And in their minds, I think men are still ahead. I know men are told often, you know, you have all the advantages. Listen to this. Um, in a few years, twice the number of college graduates will be women than men. Right. Twice. 70% yeah. uh, of high school valedictorians Girls. are women. Uh, there are, in 10 states, they're a grade level above the boys. In all 50 states, they're at least half a grade level above the boys. Listen, I, this, this blew my mind. Single women, far more likely to own their own home mm -hmm. than single men. Um, far less likely to commit suicide or be in prison. Uh, and almost twice as many are married under 30. 63% of women under 30 are married, only 34% of men. So, I, I don't know, do the liberals have the guts to, like, take the case of somebody who's kind of lagging behind if it's a male? Well, the, the question is, should they pay for the sins of their father and their grandfather? Because a 19-year-old who doesn't have any prospects with just a college degree, without a college degree, who has an education system that's biased against them, boys are twice as likely to be suspended, the exact same behavior as a girl, five times as likely if you're a black boy. Uh, you, you mentioned some, some statistics. If you're a boy on, a man on Tinder, if you're in the bottom half of our average attractiveness, you have to swipe 200 times to get a date. So you get confirmation you have no value. And we have to have an honest conversation. Mating dynamics are different for men and women. Women, 75% of women say that economic viability is important, only 25% of men. Women mate socioeconomically horizontally and up, men horizontally and down. So the result is a lack of household formation. And essentially, there's nothing more dangerous than a lonely, broken young man. And we're producing too many of them. And finally, we're having a productive conversation because who wants more emotionally and economically viable young men? Women. This is, compassion is not a zero-sum game. Civil rights didn't hurt white people. Gay marriage didn't hurt heterosexual marriage. Nor is having empathy for the group that has fallen furthest, fastest, is that going to affect women? We're finally having a productive conversation. The advocating for men does not make you anti-women. I think that's absolutely true. And I think that there's probably some good policy answers here. So making school more available to and more keyed towards boys is definitely one answer. Um, I also think that there's a cultural answer that's going to have to come into play here. So one of our great living economists, Claudia Golden of Harvard, has studied men and women in the labor market and has found that when women enter a profession, men leave. The profession becomes devalued. The people within it hmm. make less money because the men don't want to be associated with the women there. Uh, it's called the pollutant theory of discrimination. Hmm. Women are the pollutant in the eyes of men. And so I think that this is one way in which patriarchy is hurting men. And I completely agree with you that this isn't zero sum. And it's a crisis. In terms of other cultural things, I think that the media that young men are consuming and what uh, they are being told about themselves and what the world owes them is unbelievably disgustingly toxic. Yeah. I don't know how you combat Andrew Tate. He's a... I won't say this specifically about him. What he says is monstrous. Andrew Tate. Yeah. Tell people who he is who may not know that name. <laughs> he is a um, person who <laughs> no longer lives in the United States, who creates YouTube content, I think, primarily, that basically it's very, very homosocial. It's all about being seen as sort of a big guy with a yeah. Lamborghini. Women are kind of just accessories. Um, and he is... Is he um, under arrest now? For... Yeah, he's facing legal trouble for his abuse of, of women. Yeah, a, a, he starts off fine. He talks about self-reliance and physical fitness and being action-oriented, and it leads to a very dark place. And I think a lot of people have a gag, an understandable gag reflex when you start advocating for men, because a lot of people on TikTok pretending to advocate for men, it's just thinly veiled misogyny. We need more male role models. We need to redefine yep. masculinity. And also, just respect, just respect, with respect to masculinity, there is nothing less masculine than being arrested for trafficking people and potentially tonight in a Romanian prison being someone's bitch. That is the opposite of masculinity. What? Why are young men so lazy, though? 
That's what I don't understand. I mean, you see them Are on, they? You see them on dates in shorts. <laughs> Yes, they are. <laughs> Stuff like that. I mean, just like little things you could do. And they just don't, they just seem to be, un, they would rather sit home and jerk off to porn. I, I, I don't get the, the inertia that seemed to be in, built into them. I, I would put, I think a lot of it is our fault. I think that men who have achieved a certain level of success need the ultimate expression of masculinity, in my view, is to take an interest, a vested interest in the well-being of a young man or a boy who's not yours. Because the moment, the number one indicator of suicide among teen boys is a fatherless home. 70% uh, of men who are incarcerated didn't have a male role model. So if we want better men, we have to be better men. We have to get involved in the lives. And it, no, you're no, talking about mating no. dynamics? I think in health, in high school, we should have a course on mating dynamics that teaches everyone, especially young men, how to approach someone and express romantic interest, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's not toxic, <laughs> while, while, this is the hard part, while making them feel safe. They've been taught even that it's toxic to express that interest. It's even not. Even if I wanted to help you with this, it's too risky. <laughs> You know, they would just say I was a pervert. It was, oh, boy, Bill Maher suddenly took an interest in a 15-year-old boy. Not at all. Yeah, they would. No, they wouldn't. Sorry.